Hello, everyone. Welcome back to CSUN's, CSUN's Performance Ensemble presents A Conversation With. I'm your host, Samantha Garcia, and this is... Not Jefferson Denham. <laughs> My name is Fernando Martinez. And today we're going to have a conversation with each other. So, Fernando, would you tell us what we'll be chatting about today? Yeah, I, it's so t I think today's a, a special special day for a couple of reasons, um, but mostly because we want to talk about something specifically, right? And so today we decided that we wanted to talk about the writing and directing process, and so just how we're able to create our pieces, how we can improve our, our writing skills and what we can do to sort of just like help our, our nerves and how we can translate all that onto the stage because that, I mean, that's the biggest part of PE is writing and, and, and directing, right? And so, yeah, super excited to talk about those things. Awesome. So since um, we wanted to talk about the whole process, how we, how we really create in the classroom, um, in the beginning of each class period, we usually write Fernando, we start with a, um, a physical movement exercise, including sound and um, movement in any way, shape or form. I wanted to ask you, Fernando, what are some things that we kind of practiced in class, in the beginning of class to warm us up that you didn't think would be useful because we did kind of like crazy out of the box things. Um, but these things ended up really impacting the way we performed. Like, what things did you didn't think were useful, but ended up really helping us in the long run? Uh, okay, so, um, so okay, well, there's two things. <laughs> um, the first one is the, so I think when we think of like theater, when we think of performance, we have these sort of stereotypical activities that we do to warm up, right? Like you have, these like vocal exercises or you have these like stretches and you have like all these different like stereotypical acts right um one for me that was sort of weird when i was first introduced to it was sip sap zop um for anybody that doesn't know the game it's literally just you say zip then and, and you like throw something at somebody right like you just do this movement and the person has to respond with zap throw it to somebody else they have to respond with zop and you just do that until there's like one person remaining um and it was weird to me um, because it felt like it was a competition, right? And it was like the last person standing was the winner. And I'm like, well, how does that even help you? And I think it took a while for me to realize that that activity was just trust building, I think, between ensemble members, right? Because you sort of just have to, it, it forces you to look at, each, look at each other in the eyes like you have to make eye contact you have to sort of be on like in sync with everybody else you have to trust that nobody's gonna like i don't know like they want to pass this over to you like they don't want to eliminate you it's just that you eliminate yourself and so i guess the yes. building in that exercise um not to mention that it was fun it just felt like a game but it was like trust building um and i think that was the biggest one a second one i i I think you were there for this one. Um, mm. We had a vocal coach come in, or somebody who like works with voice. Were you there for that? Like the <laughs> yeah, the the theater professor. Yeah, yeah, we had a professor from the theater come in, and um, it's a Dr. Menzies, I think, and she came mm -hmm. in and she made us do some of the weirdest things that we've ever done, like that I've ever done in my life, and and like she had us. Um, not project but um i don't even know what she called it like she didn't want us projecting she like had us lay down on the floor and talk to a very specific spot in the room and like it had an increase in volume and it was just like really weird and i like i'm not a very loud person and so it was almost uncomfortable for me but it helped i think it really helped for me to sort of direct a message to the audience right it was easier to sort of perform and look at them in the eye and use my voice to tell the story which sounds ridiculous to say because obviously like you have to talk but i it helped me use my voice to tell a story and it and i think it helped me sort of shed nerves too because it's like oh it can't get any more any more embarrassing than that you know so um i don't know if you had any similar experiences or maybe there was um 
those were the activities that stood out for you too. I, I sort of want to know what activities um, had that impact for you. Oh yeah, totally. And to add on to, to that, in that vocal class, that activity that he was just talking about, we were on our backs with our legs and hands up, just like shaking and convulsing. Okay. And um, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> yelling from the core of our, yeah. So, and things like that, I feel like the ones that you described are like, since we do kind of warm ups every day, it's like a subtle programming of kind of getting comfortable with being uncomfortable which is one of the main themes of uh, time in the classroom and performance. One of, the, um, one of the exercises that was super new to me that um, I just, I didn't get at first and I, I found it really difficult too. So maybe I was just frustrated that um, it was so hard for me, but it was an exercise called flocking. And in this, um, in this exercise, the entire class um, we leave the classroom for to have a bigger space and we go out into the hall and we all get into kind of staggered lines with four points and eat, um, four people stand at each point. And this is a movement exercise. So if we are starting facing one side, the person that is the point of that side is who the entire group from each direction, we're following their movement, their sound, um, almost mimicking it. But the catch is um, you, can, you can only look forward to the person that's directly in front of you. And so you kind of have to use your peripherals and feel out your, um, your surroundings, who's next to you, to kind of really catch on to the entire flock. And when the, per the person in the front is the leader of the movement, when, you, um, when that person moves to the next direction that um, leadership gets thrown over to the next person in that point so it's um if i explain that clearly enough you can probably see how um it helps you be more intuitive with with a group and really feel each other's energy because that is key i feel to a a good performance is having good chemistry with your team members so that that's the one activity that really stood out to me and did you feel that immediately or did it take a while for that? i guess that feeling to sort of set in it took a while for the feeling to set in like the feeling of realizing that this was useful mm -hmm. yeah because the first couple times i was i didn't hate it or anything i was just like i was like huh okay, how can, I, how can I do this if I can't see anybody, <laughs> if I can't see the person that's leading? So that was where like a little bit of frustration came in. But then when it came down to us actually creating pieces together in class and um, the, pe the people that directed pieces that included the entire class, like I feel like without the flocking activity, I wouldn't have been so... Um, comfortable with staging and um, performing separately like in a separate direction if someone's facing another way it was just it was just like a really good exercise you know it's it's funny because um you, you were sort of just saying how like you didn't hate it but it was just like a you know like it was just a, an experience of its own I I like I didn't hate it either, but I feel like I always found a reason to not do it. <laughs> like, I was about to say, you sat out on all of those and found a way to take notes instead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, like, I just took responsibility of other things in the meantime, like, you know, like house clearing stuff or um, sending emails or, you know, like, I just did. I mean, I, like, I'm not going to say it didn't work. Obviously, it worked. It, like, helped everybody sort of bond and... and I think, I think just sort of trust, um, sort of trust that the other member would be there for you, you know, like whether that's on stage, like if they're going to respond to your lines or they're going to um, follow whatever movement it is that they have to follow, like they're going to do that, do that. I just, I feel like other things did it for me. And so like, I always just like set out on them. A lot of it had to do because yeah. like, I was living off a of rock star. So, <laughs> you know, like I was too hyped for, I couldn't do it. And you like, couldn't do the slow flocking movements. My heart was racing. My clothes. too much caffeine in grad school. Yeah, I was like two cans in at that point. Um, oh my god! And my clothes were tight, and it was just—it was, you know, like I, I didn't. 
Yeah. Like, it was hot in the building too, you know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we were only nine people when we started doing that, but eventually like when following semester, we had like almost 20 students or something. And it was just hot in that because we did it in the classroom and then we would do it. <laughs> but it's spring and spring in LA is burning hot. So it's like, you know, um, yeah, there's sacrifice involved in yeah. this, this type of class, but yeah. it didn't help that the building was like all glass too. So like, it's just like, you know, Oh yeah. The sun is, is literally hitting you, yeah. um, just like on you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's interesting to see how that, that one exercise sort of stood out and, and did all those things for you. Um, that I felt like a handful of exercises did that for me. And for you, it was just one. And it was Probably eight. because I feel like um, performance ensemble kind of caters to different individuals that learn differently and get comfortable differently. And we're totally different. We're so different in so many ways. And yeah, like that one was more movement based too. Like you're not really like, like your favorite thing isn't to move in performance like you like I'm ready to dance like I'm ready to run around and dance so I'm like I'm gonna get up I don't I don't really sweat <laughs> so yeah. that's the difference you know that's funny. but speaking of getting comfortable um you know performing and doing uncomfortable things I wanted to ask you um how can since this is a you know there's all, it's kind of an all levels class. You get grad students, you get freshmen, you get um, sophomore all the way up to um, senior. And you can really have a mix of um, different, uh, different places in the journey of, of people coming into the class. So, you know, if, if you're just starting college, like how can somebody, you know, just finding out about this, wanting to try it out, come to terms with performing in, uh, in front of a bunch of people like they're all even because it's scary enough to perform in front of your classroom but to go on to random sites in the campus um and into the library and perform in front of all of these college peers that you have um how how are how are we able to shake off those kinds of nerves and and give a performance especially when performing such personal um stories um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so there's like, there's two ways that I want to answer this. And I think the first one is just sort of going off of my own like personal um, philosophy. And, you know, like, it's just for me, it was accepting the fact that of like the 30, 40,000 students on campus, I'm never going to see 99.9% .9 of them again in my life, right? And if I do, I'm not going to remember them. Um, so if I have to like go out there and do something and it, cause it was embarrassing for me at first, right? Cause I was, I'm just an, I'm, I'm a very like, I don't know, like I can be extroverted sometimes, but I think like for the most part, I'm pretty introverted. And so like, it was hard for me, but knowing that I never have to see them again was, was comforting for me. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think if I'm sort of stepping away from that and, and just wanting to say something in general for students that are interested or just recently joined maybe and are sort of scared um, regardless of what year they're in I think it's important knowing that there's steps to it right like you don't just join PE and then you're suddenly writing a piece and suddenly staging it and suddenly performing you're not like everything is a process there are steps to it and I think that one of the first steps is sort of getting I think before you even get comfortable with performing you get comfortable with the people around you mm -hmm. and a part of that has to do with the director, right? Like if the director does a good job, you are able to sort of, um, I don't know, like everybody's just sort of like mesh together well, right? Like you can just riff off each other well. And I think that PE is lucky that they have Jade and that like she is a, more than capable of making that happen for students. But yeah, I think the first step is, is just understand that you're going to get comfortable with the people in the classroom first. Um, and that's all you need. As soon as you get comfortable with them, I think that you can do the most embarrassing thing on any site on campus. Uh, you can travel anywhere. It doesn't matter because you're going to have the same people with you. You're not going to be doing it by yourself. Um, and maybe an example of it was when, like when we, uh, for the fall of 2018, I think when we, 
we like performed in front of the school's library. Um, and for anybody that doesn't go to CSUN, like that's like the most populated area on campus because that's where everybody has to walk to either one, go to and from the library, but also for all the commuters because it's like a major commute, like public transportation commuter school. That's where you had to walk to get to the bus stop, right? So like everybody saw you there. Um, and I think from an outside perspective, it's embarrassing because like, you're doing something like we didn't even have a show. I think we were just flocking or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and like there was no structure, there was no order to anything. We just went out there and flocked. Didn't say a single word. It was being recorded and, and like classes were asked to come over to watch and people were just stopping by and watching us, probably thinking that we were weird. And it didn't matter because it was just us, you know, like I already like trusted and felt comfortable with all of you. And so I think that's the first thing. I think it's just understanding that you're gonna enter a room with people and eventually you're gonna get to know them you know, well enough to feel comfortable with them. And, and that's just sort of going to, that's what's going to push you throughout the rest of the semester or the rest of the years that you're going to be in. Oh, yeah, I absolutely agree that that um, that comfortable uh, feeling of performing is cultivated from the beginning of the semester or whatever, like, we go in, yeah, we're not just going in and it's like, all right, you're performing. Um, on uh, in front of the library tomorrow <laughs> it's more like we go in and actually one of the you know one of the first things we do is just prioritize getting to know each other introducing ourselves um probably start some creative writing on the first day and then the next week of class is i think what really the second week of the semester of performance ensemble is really important because i think that's when everybody comes back with their talents that can be utilized in performance, whatever it may be. And, you know, and these are we're not like, it's not like all these extremely um, like renowned, like people in theater and performers are coming in to um, this class thinking that they're going to have to, you know, expose themselves like that. But <clears throat> that's kind of the point where people kind of think like, do I want to stay or do I want to go? And I think it's a great, it's a great option to have because, you know, when you're in school, like it's, it's hard to find a creative outlet if you're so busy, but this class can be, you know, if you're willing to sacrifice that little bit of uncomfortability, you can, you can gain a whole experience um, being in performance ensemble. But um like when you share your talents the next week, like some people you can, you know, like you can, if your talent is poetry, you can write poetry. I think you, you know, you shared a lot of poetry. Um, some people sang, some people did a whole dance routine. Some people um, played an instrument or just really anything that you, any way you can creatively express is welcomed, which yeah. I thought is and pretty I, cool. I just wanted to add one more to that. I, cause, um, you weren't there, but like, I, I think it was, when was it? When did Mark join? I'm confused. Or maybe you were there. A year after we graduated. Yeah, it, I don't remember what semester, but like Mark came in and everybody was sort of bringing their own thing. I like, know somebody doing stand up, like, you know, it doesn't even have to be like, oh, yeah. Cool, like performing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the arts. Like, yeah. yeah. And Mark came in and he, like, it's a black box room, right? And so Mark stacked black boxes on top of each other and he started climbing, but the boxes weren't even, he purposely made them stack unsteadily. And so you can, like, see them doing this, like, they were just moving and everybody was, like, freaking out. And it was just like, oh, it might, this might be like a, I don't know, like a medical liability, you know, like it just might be a liability. This is going to hurt himself by accident. Um, and as he's nearing the top, he's just all like, nah, and he steps down. Like, that's all he did. Like, it, and you're like, how, you know, like, how are you going to implement this into performance? But you I'm can't. blown away. I had, I just saw it all in my head. Yeah. It like blew me away too. And it sounds ridiculous, but it's not. And so like, you can come in, like you said, that second week is important because you, you come in with sort of, uh, whatever talent you have or just you can show anything it, it doesn't even have to be a talent yeah and um I think that's an interesting part of the process because I, I think that what that involves too though is just sort of uh writing right like for for a lot of us like a big part of coming into the second week is you would have already been asked to write something mm -hmm. um 
which again, it was just the, the, the focus of, of today, right? Like, it's just, you have to do all these things before you even get to the writing, I think. Um, but yeah, like a major part is just doing the writing and coming back to the second week, like you said, and it's just sort of showing off whatever it is that you want to show off, whether people call it talent or not. Yeah, whatever is just um, telling of who you are is, you know, I felt like that second semester when we had like 20 people and 20 people, you know, showed their awesome, amazing talents. And we had so many talented people that semester. It's just such a, it's like a turnaround immediately. Like the first day is so nerve wracking. And then after that, it's a breeze. Cause you yeah. just, that, that's like the, mo like you're up there by yourself doing whatever in front of these people you just met last week. And then, then we can, we could flock. We could, do those interlocking things that we do like it's a breeze after that mm -hmm. i agree yeah so i wanted to ask another question um to someone who is thinking that this is for them so we talked about kind of the beginning of the process let's say let's move forward a little bit further into the semester what is a typical day of creating um, for the show, uh, like in the PE classroom? Um, nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like this one is, oh, man. like, I'm not, it's not even that I forgot. I think it's just, I don't know how I want to word it, but it, like, I think a typical day is, I think it's just, like, constant, almost like constant show and tell, I think is what a typical day is, or at least that's how okay. I remembered it, right? Like it's, you're coming in with something, at this point you've already shown what your, you know, your quote unquote talent is, and um, you would have brought in ideas for what it is that you want to perform. Um, and so you're like constantly showing it and then getting feedback and then a lot of just reworking or rewriting. I think it's just like a lot of editing. Like if we think of it, think of it as a, as a paper in your class, it's a lot of editing. Um, and I think that's all we do. I think that's what it looks like. I think it's a lot of warming up. It's a lot of just sort of getting comfortable with each other, even though we're comfortable with each other, um, getting our bodies warmed up, getting sweaty because, you know, black box. Um, and yeah, it's just like a lot of editing. I think it's just like being prepared to be told that, hey, this part, could improve um and it's just a lot of that and, and just trying to rewrite it and and rework it and try to see if anybody's willing to help i think that's what a typical day of pe looks like it but it doesn't feel dreadful i think i feel like if you're in another class and it's like you know that you have to meet with a teacher for a professor for example and it's like oh they're gonna give me feedback and that's kind of scary because it might make me feel bad or it you know might show me that i'm not actually good at something it doesn't feel that way you know um, it's just, I think it feels, it feels good because you know that you're getting closer and closer to finish, uh, finally uh, polishing a product and being able to show it off and then show it up proudly too. And so that's what a typical day looked like. If you, I don't know if that was, that's what it looked like for you. No, that's perfect. I, again, saw it so perfectly in my head because it's just, it's really, it really is a lot of editing <laughs> and a lot of just regrouping and a lot of really kind of, you know, you know how you get writer's block mm -hmm. sometimes you know there's uh there's there's things like that for choreography for writing poetry for scripting and staging and sometimes you know because you know a typical day looks like breaking out into our groups of performance and you know editing and reworking it and getting I feel like that because like the piece that you're in man that that becomes like your really close-knit <clears throat> group and you spend you kind of look forward to that class because you're gonna be with your group of homies that you're working on a piece with. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. I don't even know how I forget. Yeah, that's like the, I think that was like <laughs> the part of PE. It's like, there's a lot of small group work, right? Like it, it's like you said, yeah, like the Jade splits you up into groups depending on, on, I guess she's just able to see who's able to, who would be able to help each other the most, right? And so you just end up with those people. Um, obviously like you and I, like if, you know, because we were TAs, like we were assistants. So like we got split up just because like we have to work with as many people as we could. Um, but yeah, you, you work with people that are probably going to 
help you improve because they have, I don't know, like talents or parts to them that, that you may not have to the fullest potential and they can sort of bring that out of you. And yeah, they, they sort of become your, um, like your assistant directors almost, I think, because they're the ones who end up helping you write the whole piece, you know, if, like if you need exactly. that. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that sort of wants, like, that, it, it brings up the whole idea of the process too, because like, I, I wanted to ask you um, about writing because it, like, it seems like it's like the most important thing here, right? Like obviously like you have to perform and you have to do it on stage, but before you get to, before you get to do that at all, you have to write, you know, like you have to write your piece. And um, to me, I, I think that one of the biggest frustrations when it comes to the process in PE is just getting started, right? Because you don't even know how to start. You're sort of giving this vague, sort of vague, not vague prompt. And you have a group of people that are supposed to help you. But how do you start writing? Like, what was that process like for you? And, and I think that if you sort of want to contextualize it, like, I guess, let the audience know, whoever's listening, know what your piece was. Um, I don't know, let's say for Caged Bird, right? Like, what was your piece? And how did you start writing that? Like, how did you come up with the idea? Okay, so... I feel like there's, you know, uh, like two kinds of people in the world, like some people that can just like, it's just really natural for them to like come up with like a random, like creative piece. And for some people who are super strong in other areas have a really hard time and feel like they're like pulling teeth and pulling something from the deepest core of them that they can't even find to just put a word on a paper. <clears throat> so, um, I'll talk about that, but for me, I'm kind of one of those people who's always just been into performance and the arts, and um, my piece was uh, a, um, a musical piece that I used to be in show choir in high school, so that's what came to me naturally, is the directing a, a sing and dance, but it was more of like a movement and sing, um, and for me, that process was kind of just for, you know how we just talked about the show and tell mm -hmm. um, for my show and tell for that um, semester I got together with Mr. Jefferson Denham and we sang uh, I, he played he accompanied me in um, singing the song uh, Rev, uh, talking about a revolution by Tracy Chapman and we thought that the song that I used for that actually really fit the theme of the show so um, me and him decided why don't we turn this um, this duo performance into a group performance. And so I thought that was really cool. And I kind of just, the way I write, I just, I kind of draw more. I'm like a visual person. So I kind of just drew out formations um, on how I felt like formations that we could get into that would kind of match the, the message of the, of the piece. And all of that, like there was a little bit of, you know, miming, acting, a little bit of synchronized movement. And at the end, we were all kind of singing together, which is really cool. But that was a super fun, um, but, but natural process for me. But I know that a lot of people like can't just naturally come up with, you know, just like a, like a random piece. But a lot of those people may still be in, this, in that class. And I think it's almost even better for people who, you know, this doesn't come naturally for them because J, uh, the director kind of cultivates an environment where um, you're able to look for those things. Like give you, and it give, we give you, you get time to kind of look inside and like you, and you also have support from the whole class. Be like, you know, you're like, help you, like to help you out. If you're stuck, you have people to help you out which is cool. Yeah, and I, I think too, I think that as you were answering it, it I, I was sort of thinking about, you know how you were saying how like some of this comes naturally to some and it doesn't to others. And um, it, and just speaking about like frustrations, it's like I also have frustrations when it comes to writing because I struggle to get started. But it like, it's just smooth sailing afterwards, right? But with, but I started thinking about how you did your piece or, or I don't know, Sir, for example, who never includes any words in their in, in their performances you know 
Um, and so sort of thinking about YouTube, it's just like, I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, I, I think that's why I was curious. It was like, how did you even get something that's movement heavy, even though there's a song playing, even though you're singing, it's, it's the piece is a movement piece to me, you know, like it wasn't even like a, yeah, they're singing, but like, it wasn't like a sing and movement thing to me. It was just straight up movement. It just was accompanied by guitar and voice. And I'm like, how do you even write that? Cause you can't be like, you know, it's not like writing a script where you're, or I mean, maybe it is, but like, it's not like you're writing dialogue, you know? Yeah, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. Yeah, that's that's so weird to me, because I know that you, <laughs> I know that like, Sir pictures that in their head and they sort of just tell you, but they don't like write anything down. I'm like, how? I think it's because me and Sir are both dancers. Me? We both, because we were actually on the same, um, I think like on the same dance crew for like a second, but that's, I think that's kind of like, I don't realize that sometimes, but that's the natural inclination. Like, all right, movement, choreography, positions, let's go. Yeah, and, and yeah, and so, I mean, it's still, like, it trips me out, right? Like, it was cool. <laughs> We're and, those two different people right here. Yeah, yeah, because I n never in a million years would I be able to do that, you know? And I intend not to, because I don't care enough to try to write something movement-based, right? But yeah. What's cool, though, is that even though it's not my thing and I, and I wouldn't do it on my own, like, or on, like, you know, like, on my own volition, but I would, I was still a part of your piece. It was, like, a, it was a, it was a, like a, a ensemble piece right everybody was involved um, I mean it helped that there was only like nine of us but everybody was involved um yeah I was like this is my choir <laughs> yeah and a bit, that's the cool thing though is like I felt comfortable enough to to be somebody who's moving in that piece because um you know I I think that for me there was parts of it where it felt like I probably looked ridiculous. Like there was a part where we have to like move in slow motion. It looked like we're running in slow motion. And I'm like, I can't, well, one, I don't have good balance, but two, I feel like I look ridiculous right now. Yeah, that's so funny. Cause I think that like me even staging that, it says I, when I think about performance, I immediately think about what, what things look like from the audience perspective. So like, and like, it's kind of like a show choir thing to be like, the, the more ridiculous you feel like you're doing, the better it's actually looking to the audience, which is so cool. And you got to like learn that like through your body, like doing it. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And th yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's funny too, how like we are those like two different people, you know, like we don't do the things that we do. Like I, because that's the thing, like I know that you can work with words, but like, that's the thing that I always did, right? Like I never did it, like I never moved, <laughs> you know? Like even yeah. in pieces, I never moved. I like have, had to ask for help, but when it, and, and I think this is something for anybody that, that sort of wants to do poetry or just wants to write or do some sort of like personal narrative piece. Um, Cause I sort of have this obsession with, with words, right? Like I just love using words and performing with words and I wasn't very good at it. Like years back when I first started, I would, you know, write my, it's just, it's just be this like giant block, just like all together. And there, I didn't add anything to it. And that's fine. Like you don't have to, but when I did it, it just always felt like I was missing something. And at the time I didn't struggle with starting to write, like I just wrote. But I think that as the years went by, I started to recognize that the pieces that I was more proud of or the pieces that I felt were more polished or, or, you know, like the pieces that I felt like the people responded to better were the pieces that I struggled in writing because it, it just means that it means that you're probably putting in more work to it, or maybe you want to put more work in. That's where Even that subconsciously, comes. right? Yeah, yeah. And maybe that's where the frustration comes. And uh, eventually I sort of, it, 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 this is just sort of advice right like for me what helped was thinking about the rules of three like the rule of three when it comes to writing right so you if you're writing a poetry piece you're doing it in three stanzas or three paragraphs um mm -hmm. and you start off with three lines in each and it's the bare minimum and then you can only add from there and so that's what i started doing is i was like okay well it's easy for me to come up with ideas like i want to talk about how um macarthur park is is I mean, it's the hood, right? Like it's dangerous, it's rough out there. Or how, um, I don't know, like how Echo Park got super gentrified, how you have these like street corn vendors getting pushed out for these like super fancy vendors that are coming in, you know, like, 
and so the ideas came easy. I just didn't know how to write. And I was like, okay, well, I have this really cool idea, or at least I think it's cool, and I really want to do this. Now I'm just going to try to put that into the rule of three. So let me split my story up into three parts. And so I was like, okay, well, what's the beginning in my story? I don't even know where to, be, where to begin. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, I mean, the, the start of my story is, is sort of entering the space. So that's part one. And then part two is witnessing something. And part three is just sort of, I don't know, like you would just come up with something, right? So that's just sort of um, how I ended up working things. And it's still frustrating because it's still kind of hard to get started. But I think it helps to sort of have your devices. And I think that was mine, right? Like my performative device is just being able to split it into threes. And that was it. And ever since then, like that's how I've been working. Even like my pieces that are like eight pages long are technically split into three, right? It's just like... Yeah. Yeah, so it's just a sort of piece of advice for people. And, you know, obviously that doesn't apply to everybody. I know that you don't work that way and I don't work the way that you do, right? I literally can't do what you do, like what you just talked about. Like you said, you can't do it. I, I really, I'm so, that's so much work. That sounds like so much work, but it, to you, it's like, it's natural. Like you're, you naturally write that way. So I would say, yeah, that's, a, that's good that you brought that up. Yeah, I mean, everybody just has their own thing. And like, I mean, we all know I have my faults. I always like show up to show and tell with like 20 pages. and (laughs) Because you're just going, you're just flowing. Yeah, so it's just, it's interesting how, I mean, it is a frustrating experience for some, right? Like maybe it wasn't for you, but like it is for some. and, And it's just crazy how how we think it's a bad thing, but it's not. It's so normal and it's fine. Yeah. It's necessary because, you know, there's always going to be people in the class that are like me and people in the class that are like you. And when they work together in pieces and come together in groups, those um, those little gifts and talents emerge, you know, because you, you know, they're you're pulling it out of each other naturally. Yeah. And that, that happens in a group of people no matter what. So in the class, there's always going to be that balance, I feel. Yeah, and I, I guess I just wanted to hear what, like, what piece of advice do you have for anybody, right? Like, whether they're doing something that's movement-based or, or maybe that's word-based, even if that's not something that you do, what advice would you give them on the struggles or frustrations of getting started in the writing process? I would say to anybody, you know, to get started, to get started is, is always the hardest part, for sure. And like you said, right after, it's a breeze. But I think a lot of people tend to get stuck in um, maybe asking others for their opinion on their piece. Let's say like, you know, especially if like you're new to this, you're going to ask all your friends like, is this good? Like, is this okay? And kind of being a little bit creatively blocked by that. My advice would be to kind of sit with yourself and um, do something that makes you happy and um kind of just just like be your be alone for a little while like you know just like be in your own vibe if anything Mm -hmm. and kind of maybe start there like you know if we really want to like go there for sure i think that people should kind of just kind of forget what everybody else says to them and like let go of other people's voices for like block out a certain amount of time you know, if you're stuck, you know, if this isn't natural for you and kind of just really like vibe it out, literally vibe, vibe out your piece and it'll be the most you that it could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And, and I think that last part, it's, it's just like, make it the most you right? Like, how do you do that? How do you, how do you write about yourself? Cause I think, I think in following up with that frustration is just sort of the the struggles in terms of writing about yourself, right? Because PE, I think for the most part has been a really like, um, and, and I mean, I can, we're trying to switch it up too, but for the most part, it's been uh, personal narratives, right? It's been writing about yourself and, and your story and, and who you are and I, I guess just, I guess who you are in relation to the world and how do you even write about yourself? Is that a yeah. Is that a struggle? Is that something that you dealt with? Um, for me, writing about myself, yes, it's it becomes a, it's like it's a struggle, 
but I just, I totally just remembered that in class, each class meeting kind of before we start really creating our pieces, we're kind of given prompts in class that kind of pull some things out of us. Um, like, um, like self centered um, assignments, you know, in class kind of like, we're given a prompt and we can each interpret it creatively in any way, shape, or form literally we can act it out we can draw it out we can write it out and i think that's that's really helpful for me like those class activities so it's important to not miss class <laughs> at least for me you know yeah yeah i can see that yeah because i i think that for for me right that's the thing i think that for me it, it sort of came naturally but i think it's just because outside of outside of pe i did at the time i didn't really talk about myself like i wasn't really open nobody really knew that much about me or, or the stories that i had i never really told or i felt like i couldn't tell and so all of that just sort of felt very trapped in i get it I, very restrained and so you know, maybe not a lot of people feel this way, but yeah, like for me, it's just like, I felt like I had stories to tell. And, and so when it, it when it came down to what you were saying about having these sort of self-centered prompts, right, which it, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but yeah, like it, it, it was all about us. And mm -hmm. I think it was done so for a reason, right? So that we can let these things out and finally talk about the things that we want to talk about, or maybe we've never felt uh, safe or comfortable to talk about them in front of our own friends or in front of our families because I know a lot of us struggle with that too um, you know but it's just I don't even know what I want to get to I feel like I feel like I feel like that stuff will come out naturally because if you've sort of been repressed in that way then this is you finally you realize that this is finally your escape and I think that's what it offers for a lot of people and so when you're writing that writing process it it might become easy i think that the only thing that's difficult then is just sort of I, I don't know if this is something that you've experienced but for me there's a lot of pressure it's like oh i mean you sort of touched on it too it's like sort of pressure it's like oh what are people going to think in the audience you know like if i'm writing something that i don't know maybe it's a little bit too extreme or it might upset people or you know like it there's this sort of pressure to sort of uh one entertain them but two stay genuine to to who you are right be be as, as honest as possible about what you've experienced about who you are and stay true to your identity while trying to conform or like um entertain your audience members or maybe not do something that might piss somebody off because you know like we know that we've like pissed people off before in the audience mm -hmm. um, we've done it more than once and so it you know that's a pressure for me i think it's just trying to keep them happy but also keep myself happy when it comes to writing is there any way that we can sort of fix that or remedy that is there any advice that you have for students yeah and i think a lot of um a lot of that is cultivated meeting in class with you know these the support group that we call a class you know like i feel like it's just like a a band of supportive people that you get together with weekly and um kind of like everybody's sort of listening you know and when you feel like you're heard you're able to become more comfortable with letting letting more out and you realize how much more you've been suppressing but you're like so shocked that people like even care about you know that's i think that's a struggle you know with like even for me i actually like because of that reason, you know, I just, I keep my, I kept my peace impersonal, like not, not impersonal. It was like, you know, it was relating to like a bigger picture that I was passionate about, but it wasn't my story because I think, yeah, I'm, I don't really talk about myself naturally. Like when it, I'm more of a, a listener, but I think there's like a role for that in, in these spaces, you know? Where was I coming from? Well, how about you? <laughs> uh, 
Um, for in terms of advice, I think, um, I, I think the biggest thing is knowing that I, I think remembering why you stepped into that space in the first place, right? Like you, I don't think, or maybe it's just an assumption that I'm making is I feel that students still go, don't go in, you know, they're reading, they're sort of reading the list of classes that CSUN has to offer, that the communication department has to offer. I don't think they go in there, read that and be like, oh, I'm going to go in that to entertain people. Yeah, I don't think that's the thought process for, for a lot of students, right? I think a lot of it has to do with, um, maybe when they have experience uh, in theater, so we do get a lot of people who are from theater, right? Like And actors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like we have a lot of people, yeah, we have a lot of people who come from like over from the East or something and are trying to act and sort of join PE, or we have people that are in theater at CSUN but want to do this because it's one similar but two different enough. Um, but I think that for the most part, people join PE because it's something that is going to challenge them you know as cool as you think it sounds i think the biggest part is that it sounds challenging it's you're you're it's like you're performing but you don't sort of have that safety net of having scripts ready for you you know like it not only do you have to memorize lines but you have to do your own thing and you have to be open if you want to and you can open up about whatever it is that you want and i think remembering why you added that in the first place was sort of was just sort of the advice that I would give because you know like I just like a quick example of something that happened I think one of the semesters when I when I finally started writing in the style that I write now um, I wrote about Echo Park and just sort of how I felt frustrated walking down because I, I you know like I walking down walking down there as a kid it you didn't want to walk down there you know like it was just mm -hmm. pretty dangerous and now it's it really isn't. And on one hand, I'm glad that it's not a dangerous place to be in, to exist in, right? Like you don't run into any danger much, but in addition to that, the neighborhood also got gentrified. And so it's one of, I just wrote about how like I would walk down the street and how back then I would see like um, last names that I could pronounce properly. Like I could see things in my own language and I can see myself reflected. And as the years went by, a lot of that was getting lost and it just started becoming something else and it wasn't the change that I was upset with it was how that change happened right and so like that's what I performed and it, there was an audience member who had a question for me um, that I thought was a good question but it sort of came off as as I don't know like like the, the critique came off more personal than it did critical you know mm -hmm. and I think that I just wanted to respond in an emotional manner. Like it got me heated and I was like, man, I just, you know, like I got really upset, but I stopped and I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, yeah, that's something I didn't consider. And I, I did that because I remembered, it's like, I'm not here to entertain people, you know, like, it's not like we're trying to put our, our traumas on stage and entertain people with it. It's, we want to tell a story and if somebody decides that they want to spend their time watching us then we're lucky that we have that and i'm glad that we have that but i'm here because i want to tell my story and maybe people will relate and if they don't they don't you know exactly yeah and so i think just remembering that's like i i joined it because it was scary and i wanted to tell my story and not because i wanted to entertain people you know like i think that's that's a piece of advice i would have for students that's wonderful. And I really like that advice. Just remember, remember what you came here for. And if there's, if there's anything else I could say, just really like, just like let go, surrender to the process and be as authentic as possible. Cause then, you know, it's, it's hard to be fully authentic in college, you know, but just, just try because it's it's really rewarding like what people think on the outside don't matter yeah yeah that yeah you're gonna hear that a lot of trust the process <laughs> like that's the thing you hear the most every time you're there every week just trust the process. yeah because you're like what i'm doing this ridiculous thing <laughs> trust the process trust. it'll be a great show <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so um so i sort of want to move on to the next step here um just because we touched a little bit on, on writing and, and maybe we, we get to do that a little bit more in the future, but 
after writing comes the staging, right? Uh, so yeah. putting whatever it is that you wrote on stage. And the cool thing about PE for anybody that's interested in joining or people that are just recently joined or maybe they just want to learn about it is that, I mean, you have a director, but you are also the director yourself. Like you get to direct your own piece, right? Like they don't come up with it for you. You come up with everything you're on your, by yourself. Um, and to me, I, the, the phrase that staging is a monster is the thing that I like to <laughs> tell myself all the time because it, it is. It, I think the idea of it is really scary and I think the act of it can become scary. Um, so how do we even begin the staging process? How do you go from drawing your drawing or me writing my little things in threes and translating that on stage? Where do you begin, Sam? That's a really good question. I, where you begin with staging. So you have your idea, you have your poem. You, I think for the most part, I mean, some semesters we're out there um, scaling the campus to find ev like a place for your own personal piece, even in some of the performance classes in undergrad. But you kind of just have to really go inside and figure out how you're gonna bring this piece to life. And I, I always suggest drawing it out, you know, like that's the easiest first step is kind of like, you know, even if it's just like scribbles of where you want movement to be or what, what weight, like what ways do you want to move? Do you even want to move? What picture do you want the audience to see from, um, from where they stand, you know? So I think it all starts there, kind of figuring out the logistics of where you're at, um, who's going to see what. Um, and then that's where I, f I feel like it's really hard to do it without a team. So when you're, when you're staging and that's not, you know, natural for everyone, for sure. So it kind of, that's also kind of where the director comes in too, like Jade, the director, you can go to her for, she's really good with, um, you know, angles and she's really good with staging, but she's not going to give you, you know, all of your answers. She'll probably guide you in the direction into um, what you probably should be thinking about. But I also feel like, you know, it's kind of, kind of hard to give like full broad advice on how to do that because it also depends on like the way the individual's brain works and the way they work in general, it'll be different for them. But for the most part, staging is a pretty visual thing. So either if you're not a visual person, find someone who is to help you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I, because for, I, yeah, because I assume that's what it was. I mean, obviously that's what it was for you because you were drawing things for me. Um, and, and this is just sort of a question that I want to get into in a little bit um, regarding, you know, like how you helped me with my piece, how like you and Brie helped me with my piece. But um, when I was writing that one, for example, I, I did little like, um, I don't know, I wrote my thing on a sheet of paper and then on the side, like I was just write little notes and that's how I started staging. It's like, oh yeah, there's like two lines that I like would highlight. And I'm like, okay, I want to start walking by this point. And I would get to another and I was like, I want to stop walking at this point. And it's just super simple things like that, right? Like, like you said, it depends. If, if you're a visual person, you might want to draw it out or you might want to write it out. If, if you sort of get into this like manic state like me, like I have to write every single thing out in detail. Like nothing gets like, you know, like everything is written out. But um, I think having a second pair of eyes is, is maybe a way to start because chances are you might think that something that you, that you sort of want to stage it as might be good. Chances are that they're not, you know, like, and, and that's fine. Cause I, I think that's part of the process is just trial and error. I think we try a lot of things. A lot of things don't work out. I think the way that we sort of come up with our pieces in the beginning, like when we start, um, when we finally stop doing our show in town, we finally start putting our things in, in, in the works, right? Uh, the way that it looks in October, by the time we perform it in December, it's not the same thing or maybe a big chunk of it isn't, you know, like it changes. And I think it's having a second pair of eyes, like you said, um, because other people get to see what you're not seeing, right? Because you're so, you're so invested in your own story that you sort of lose sight of what it could be or what it could become. Um, with that being said, I, I do have a question for you. Um, 
and, and, and I'm, I'm asking this for, for two reasons. One, I feel like it could be beneficial for anybody listening, but uh, two, it's, it's just sort of nostalgic for me. Um, when we were writing for one of our shows, I, I wrote a piece where I was talking about my experiences growing up in LA, right? That's all it was. Again, I did the rules of three. I did it when I was, uh, I don't know, in elementary and high school and in middle school and high school or something like that. That's how we did it. Yeah, um, you're, you're, it's kind of like the interviews we've been doing with act one, two, three. You did that <laughs> yeah. In piece. Yeah. yeah, literally what it was. It was the three acts, um, different stages of my life. I knew that I wanted to include movement in that piece because I thought it was going to be boring for me to just stand on like standing stage and just like stay there all like robotic, you know, and just reciting my lines. I was like, I want to move and I want to include people who move in here too. And um, obviously I was the closest with you and, and Brie. Um, so I, I just like, I asked the both of you to sort of become my directors Right. In addition to having Jade, I asked you guys to help me direct the piece. And I gave you guys a lot of the uh, the power to just do whatever you guys wanted. Right. Like you guys had full control there. I didn't really like butt in and be like, ah, I don't want to do that. Like I did everything you guys told me to. And I guess the question that I have um, was, was there anything in that experience of becoming a director for your friend or for your castmate? Um, in that experience, is there anything that you learned? Oh, yeah. And it's cool because I did that for you and I think I did that for somebody else as well in another piece, but it's kind of, it's, it's really awesome. Like it's, it's shocking for people to be asked to um, be a part, like to help direct their piece. It's almost like an honor, like, Oh my goodness, like you want me to help you with your piece. That's so cool. So initially it's already so cool, but then um, it like, I know you say like you, it, like you know in your brain you gave us free creative control on like the movement portion but when it really when I really think about it I just feel like it was such a such a free-flowing group that we just bounced off of each other like I felt like we all had equal part in in every in every bit of it you know like like the choreographing process and I think that's a really cool experience um, for people in college to do that too, like to have that opportunity to see what it's like to really assistant direct something, because that could be beneficial in all ways, um, in many ways other than just performance. Yeah, I and um, it's sort of a follow up question, but uh, quickly remembering something too. I think that in the process of like you, you two help like assist directing my um, assistant directing my piece was that you two became involved, like you two and like you and Brie ended up with lines. <laughs> you know, like oh, yeah. you guys ended up with me and you became like major components in my in my piece too. Um was it difficult for you to sort of manage that I kind of have to step off to the side and sort of look at this because I they asked me to direct, but I also have to be heavily involved because I have lines and I'm participating. So now I'm directing myself and somebody else's piece. Was that difficult for you to sort of manage both the acting and the directing roles in a piece that wasn't your own? For me, I, it was, it just felt natural, honestly. Like for me, I just have a very, I just have a great time like performing and um, creating stuff, like especially in a group like that. So I just, I don't know, I just felt like it was so natural to, um, to just fall into whatever roles that I was meant to fall into, you know, I feel like, you know, every piece happened in a way for a reason. And I just felt, you know, just comfortable, like slipping into all roles, especially like, you know, you're helping like your friend express, you know, something that means something so like dearly to them. So I also, it wasn't like pressure that like, I wanted to do it justice. It was more like, yeah, we're proud of this. Like, we're gonna do it justice. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, for, I mean, I was asking you those questions too because I didn't feel any of that. And so I wondered if maybe you guys did. I was like, oh, did I do wrong by sort of putting all this responsibility onto two other people who, <laughs> um, as creative as they are, didn't experience the things that I did or if they did, it was in their own way, right? And so sort of having the responsibility of directing 
my life essentially and sort of translating that into art for people to watch was I was like, man, did I like, <laughs> was that a good decision or not? Like, I No, you can officially let go of all guilt, Fernando, that you've been carrying. <laughs> Release. <laughs> it was great. And, you know, you gave us characters that were like, you know, like we fit into, it was actually kind of serendipitous and like, like weird. Like it was like the characters that you wrote about and um, really had some sort of relation um, to me and Brie personally so we feel like we really got to step into that character like you know Brie stepped into that character I stepped into that character because and you can't do that with like if you can't connect with the character so you know you were like the designer we were like the actors but also you know part of the creation process yeah I mean, I mean I'm glad that it wasn't uh, too much pressure or too difficult I think it was interesting too um, and this is just like a side note was because at that point you have been you had been doing just like movement things or you were involved in it because I think that's a big role that you played in, in that show was you were supporting like you were the support for a lot of pieces right like you were su you're supporting performer in a lot of pieces um but like a major supporting role in all these pieces you're not just like in the background right um it was also fun for me to involve you like with Bria was like I already know that she like she can talk on stage right like she can she can talk forever on stage oh yeah online. she's a superstar <laughs> yeah. and I had like worked with her before like even before P like we were in class like we said we were in a class together before so like I performed with her but with you like you had never really like had something where you had lines and so I think a part of it too was just fun seeing you get into that role of oh now I have lines I have to speak I have to you know perform in a way that I haven't yet yeah um, it was chill I still remember your lines <laughs> Yeah, you remember my lines more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a great process, and that show was so fun from the beginning to the end, and I'm so happy to see Performance Ensemble thriving today, even through, you know, through this whole COVID lockdown, through this whole world just shifting into a new kind of, you know, reality, way of living, and you know, just to kind of bring this all together and conclude and to like, you know, tie our theme together. Is there anything, um, any last words, Fernando, about this, you know, the writing, um, directing process of performance ensemble? Uh, yeah, I think, I think the best way to sum it up is just um, remember why you joined in the first place. Uh, remember that you're not the only person there you have you have your entire ensemble to back you up and know that like with time all that is just gonna it's gonna be a breeze it really is and and you're gonna look back and, and wish you could do it all over again i think absolutely i agree there's so many memories to make um in this class and you know if you have any questions we're all here we're here we're up to suggestions we're gonna start kind of um, maybe transitioning to talking about um, many, many more things under the umbrella of performance ensemble and what you guys would like to know. So thank you all for joining us once again today. I am your host, Samantha Garcia. I am not Jefferson then, and I really miss him. And my name is Fernando Martinez. Me too. I miss him so much. We'll see you soon, Jeff, and we'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.